ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another RSF1 round here in F5 around Britain. This is either round 9 or 10. I'm not overly sure, but I believe there are 8 rounds to go in this season before we jump forward to the next season. And this is not a track I normally enjoy. Um, and yeah, I was struggling in practice and I was struggling just generally to get a lap in without spinning. As you can see there, struggling, but we do get ourselves through Q1 quite comfortably in the end in fourth place. Half a second off the first place player of Jay Chadwick. But yeah, we're struggling. We're struggling to find any sort of place. But ow. But it's all about. I banged my hand on my computer then, guys. Sorry about what. But it's all about trying to find enough pace just to just get ourselves into a com into a reasonable position this week to not lose that many points to the likes of Dano and Fruit Boy and Locker, who are all in the championship battle with myself. Only destroyers remotely in the area as well. We've got a couple other drivers I may have missed that are all within the contention. But yeah, I I currently feel like I'm battling for P3, so fingers crossed I can get that. But if I can get into P2, P1 and battle actually for the championship in the final few rounds, I'll be over the moon. As you can see, we get through the Q3. Also, whilst I've got everybody, I would like to mention FIFA. Now, that will be returning. Um, I've obviously had a little holiday, so I've not been able to record any since. So I'm hoping to have some videos for that coming online very, very soon, within the next couple days, hopefully. Failing that, the start of next week. So I'll try my best, guys, and I'll get it all recorded and uploaded. But as you can see here, we're still struggling with some grip, and that means... Our quality is done because we ain't got enough laps to go around and do another flying lap. So we're going to have to come around box and that is it. P8 on the grid. As good as we could hope, but it is what it is. And this is also our first race since the, the tragic death of Shrimper, who was a, um, a well-known guy in the RSF1 uh, in the RSF1 committee and within our racing leagues and here we go we go to the five red lights and it's go 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 and as i was saying it's gonna be everybody's gonna be wearing a pink helmet or a shade of pink which is lovely to see as we come into turn one it's a bit of a mixed match right now but trying to just stay on the racing line slightly lose the back end through here and we come into turn three Turn four through the loop. Now coming through the little kink onto the little tiny straight here. I'm not really familiar with the corner names or the court straight names around here, but we'll just wing it. Now coming into this right hander, hoping to get in behind Daniel P45. But as you can see, we've had a really good start. Fruit Boy has a little mistake. Then Daniel's mistakes. We're getting slipped through the destroyer. Trying to burn our ERS at the same time and make that move down the inside of Daniel. Run him slightly wide as we run wide ourselves, but that's within track limits if you are smart enough about it. Now coming in to Maggie's and Beckett's for the first time. And we kind of missed the line through there. And we also just moved to the side slightly. No ERS usage. Let, Dan um, let Daniel back through. Because I felt like we passed him unfairly. So we didn't really defend that position to give him the place back. So he comes back through. And we're into P6 from 8 on the grid. So we've managed to pass Hippo and Fruit Boy, I believe, off the line. So it's not too bad at all. And let's see what we can do into the latter stages of this race. And hopefully come away with some points. Because our luck has been absolutely shot of late. And, um, yeah, we do need to get a little bit better. As you can see, on lap 4. It looks like Chadwick's off the track and he comes back on really dangerously. And I'm not overly keen about that rejoin. It was a little bit on the dangerous side. He could have probably waited for us to come nice past and then rejoin the track. But he just, I, I guess it was a spur of the moment. Just come back on the racing line. Hope for the best. Um, but yeah, it was pretty dangerous to be honest with you. As you can see, EXR Invade is out of this Grand Prix and it's a safety car. Safety car, first one of the race. I can imagine we'll see another one or two in this race. But Invade is out. 
So that brings an opportunity to switch to the soft compound of tyre, which we have done. And I'm thinking at this point, do I switch back to the mediums before even pitting? Now, that would make sense before even getting back into the racing conditions. Now, I'm considering it right now, as James Petty gives us a five-second time penalty for a severe collision. Now, that made my mind up for me. As you can see, we're in the pit lane. We're going to serve our five-second time penalty. We're going to get it completely out of the way, and then we can just focus for the rest of this race, get our head down. There's the penalty gone now. Get the medium tyres on. We're going to the end without any other safety cars. As you can see now, the safety car is coming in this lap. It's already in the pits. We're waiting to go. And it is time to bolt. MT the mighty. Just in front of us. So hopefully we can get a move on somebody as soon as possible. MT the mighty got a really slow restart. But we're not going to go down the inside into Abbey. Because it's a dangerous place to try and pass. Through Farm now into Village. Followed by the loop. MT the mighty goes deep. So we're thinking about maybe setting him up for this little tiny straight. Where the ear... ERS, or sorry, DRS is not activated yet, but we're going to use a little bit of ERS. But it's not enough, because MT the Mighty is burning his as well, so we decide to turn it off, save it for when he's a bit lower, so we can use a little bit more charge to make the move easier. Now we go deep, completely get our line wrong through here, try and cut back, just try and get as close as we possibly can to have a go down the hangar straight. Because we're not going to have a go into Maggie's and Beckett's. It's just not worth it. He's going to compromise his line through there with a go on Mr. Blue Sky. So we use the track on the outside, which you can do on Strict around here in Britain. So we just decided to do so. Now we're just going to see if we can set up a move. We kind of get it slightly wrong, but not too wrong. Better than Empty the Mighty in front of us. And Mr. Blue Sky as well. We're thinking about a move, but then we just realised we're not gaining enough, so we're just going to sit behind them for now and wait. As MT the Mighty does go deep, so we're looking at a move potentially. We're just going to sit here, try and go around the outside, pretend no. We thought about it. We're going to go for the double cutback, go down the inside. Lovely move, but then we decide there was nowhere to go. That was just going to result in one of us crashing or me getting wing damage, so I backed out of that one. And we'll go again, hopefully in a minute. But we just had to sit there for now and just bide our time. As we go for a lovely dive bomb down the inside into Village. Which is going to be held around the outside through the loop. What a move that is. And we are up an extra position. Now Mr. Blue Sky, the next target for us. Has who are in a championship constructors battle with us. Along with Aston Martin. So this is quite an important move if we can pass Mr. Blue Sky, who's probably going to battle his way through the field and get some good points by the end of this as well. So Blue Sky's being held up slightly by Timmer right now, who doesn't appear to be on the pace today like he would normally be. So hopefully we can get a move done on Blue Sky as soon as possible, especially with Timmer struggling. As we go slightly wide there, which normally you'd get a warning for, but nothing this lap. But I can tell you in the future laps, in the la latter laps, we do get warnings and penalties for such a thing. If we lose that back end slightly, but we have to just sit in the slipstream of Mr. Blue Sky, use the ERS just to defend from MT the Mighty coming past us again. We don't need that. As Timmer forces Blue Sky slightly wide, which opens the door for us. Tiny, tiny bit of hesitation there from Blue Sky. And we go around the outside here. Lovely overtake, and next up for us is Timmer, we're into P13, Caution. as a Ferrari is off the track at Someone turn two, 1 and 2, he's gone off at Abbey somewhere, bit of an error, but there we go, we drive past him now, now Timmer is still the next man up the road, in P11, I don't think he's got the DRS, he has not, we do though, so we're thinking about potential move here, going to go for the inside move and we decide otherwise right now it's not the smartest move to rush these overtakes that's what got us out in Brazil lovely little cutback though should be able to pass Timmer nice and comfortable here way before Cox Timmer may not stay on the outside of Cox here because it's not a place you want to be side by side of each other and we do make the move lovely overtake and we are into P11 that was 
professional overtake and we hopefully now can close the gap in front good run through here we're not in DRS range for this lap as you can see there's someone off the track in his shadow Moses in the Alpine car off the circuit it's another free position for us we're into P10 some really good overtakes so far and we got Locker in front of us hopefully we can make this overtake on Locker nice and early up behind him now, you can see a car on the inside there. Daniel P45 has had an incident. He was looking really quick in quality, but he's obviously made a mistake. Now we're up in the P9, so we're battling our way through this field nice and professionally. Our teammate Stars Orphans right in front of RSF1 Walker, who is the guy we're trying to pass now, and he makes a slight mistake in front of us. So that's enough to maybe have a go at him. We'll see in a minute. Now through Cops, it's good to get, it's important to get a good run through here this time because we're going to be looking to make a move on Locker down the hangar straight. I know he's going to have DRS from our teammate in front, but it might be potential if Stars holds him up slightly as we get a lovely run. Locker does not, we've got the momentum. Now we're into the slipstream using our ERS, DRS as well, trying to go to the inside. We decide to turn off the ERS and sit behind but stars lets us through beautifully like a very very good teammate and he just lets us go now it's another chance to have a go at locker we're another position up locker is looking vulnerable to us right now as we make a slight mistake into the final Space corner but it's away, fine it's just enough though for us to still be within touching distance we're just following him here through through these first few corners now into village he's holding us up slightly really even to just rejoin this session and locker goes deep we slightly get on the power too early and lose the back end so it's not going to be enough to be able to make the move down this tiny straight so we're just going to have to sit here now wait for the hangar straight and have a go there as locker is just all over the place we're just trying to set him up at this point just show our hand so he thinks we're going to have a go wherever, wherever corner. As you can see, coming through Maggots and Beckett's complex now. Coming into Chapel. Good run. This will be a comfortable move. He's got no DRS from in front. And there we go. Lovely move on Rocker. We're into P7. And hopefully now close the gap on James Petty in front. We're going to the end. I don't know if everybody else is. Most people probably are. But we're definitely going to the end here without any sort of safety cars. A safety car means we come in from soft tyres, which can do all of these laps very, very comfortably. So we just continue as we are for now and hope and pray. Ah, oh, there's a penalty. Hope, I was about to say hope and pray we're not going to get a penalty, but we got one. But they, they were going to come eventually. Uh, this is one of those tracks where you do gain penalties pretty easy. A Shadow Moses is out. Both Alpine cars are now out of this Grand Prix as it brings out another safety car. And, and as you can see, we have pitted for the soft compound of tyre. So now we are in sixth place. Everybody on the soft in front. A couple medium runners behind which are going to be absolutely swallowed up if there's anybody behind them on the softs. So we've got James Petty, Hippo, right in front of us before we get towards our championship uh, uh, challengers, championship competitors which are Dano, Only Destroyer, and Fruit Boy. Now, can we make a move on James Petty and Hippo as early as possible? Because the longer we sit behind these two, because they're battling, the, the more time we lose to the front three. We need to make a move on these two as early as possible. James has got 11 seconds of penalties already, so James may not be... Well, he's not going to be a problem for us towards the end of the race due to his penalties but he might be a problem for us now as you can see the front three are getting away as we are still stuck behind James Petty and Hippo there's just no way past they seem to be just like a, a blockade in front of us right now a mobile chicane as you could say they just are not going fast enough for what I need and these are both fast drivers on their day but right now it just doesn't seem to be working for them and you can see the gap now to the front three is huge after one lap it's massive and there's nothing we can do but the one thing I haven't showed you is I've been setting up this move on James Petty for the past 
few corners. He's getting DRS now. You've watched this professional driving. We're going to throw it down the inside there. Try and throw him offline. We're going to go for the little cutback line. This is all to try and stop him getting DRS. We flustered him offline there. We're trying to avoid him getting DRS from Hippo. All the hangar straights, we can make the move. Now we're going to just get as close as we can through Cops and through Maggots and Beckett's. As you can see, we do. And he is slowly losing ground on Hippo in front. And that was what we planned. I didn't include it in the start of this. But he's missed the apex there, which is now going to provide a sitting duck of James Petty. He doesn't have the DRS. We wouldn't have passed him if he was staying within DRS on Hippo. And it's a lovely move. We set that up a few corners ago, probably nearly a lap ago, actually. And we make that move. Now, next up for us is Hippo. And then hopefully we can close the gap on the top three. But they are in a league of their own this week. They just seem to be absolutely on it. But we can try our best. I um, also have not included the championship standings. I will do that in future videos as, as we pick up another three second time penalty. So that's now six seconds. Fruit Boy does have six seconds, uh, but the gap to him is probably a little bit too much for us now. And we're not going to wait behind Hippo. We're going to go for the move into Cops. This is brave. Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton as Hippo goes out of the corner early to come back in on the exit. And he makes the move back on us. Lovely driving from Hippo, that is. Hippo does fantastically to stay in front of us, but he has made one crucial error, and that's given us DRS down the hangar straight. There is nothing Hippo can do. We go past him with ease, and we're into P4. Now, important for us is to gap Hippo, because he's got three second defense. We've got six, so if we don't gap Hippo, he will get this position anyway, so we do need to gap him, and hopefully catch Fruit Boy and Destroyer in front, but... I don't think that's a realistic possibility, so we'll just do what we can and hope for the best. As you can see now, on lap 24, the gap to Hippo is increased a little bit, but he has another uh, three-second penalty to add on. But Fruit Boy, nine seconds of pens in front of us. We've got six, which is disappointing, but we're 3.3, 3.4 just outside. So I just don't think we can do it, guys. We're nearly out of ERS as well. There's no ERS to burn on this lap to absolutely push and close that gap. And plus, he's getting DRS off the back of only Destroyer as well. And it's just not going to be good for us. There's nothing we can do. And we're going to come around the final few corners. A beautiful win for Dano. Didn't see him all, all race. Only Destroyer getting P2. Fruit Boy getting P3. Just... We get P4. Hippo will cross the line in P5, but Josh will get P5. Hippo's going to get P6. Chadwick gets P8, I think. Mr. Crunchy Bear gets P7. Stars off, and our teammate gets the driver of the day for the in-game driver. Brilliant news for the team. It's a not bad result. P4 and a P9, I believe it was, for Stars. We could do better in future weeks, but it'll do. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. I've been Chris12 LFC and I will see you later.